All right, ladies, let's dish about all the hot sex we've been having. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna get the wet nap? You gotta have inside jokes. Four steps. One, you gotta make her your friend, okay? So walk up to her, say, put your name in my phone. Then she'll probably put her number, because that's how making new contact works. Now you have her number, you haven't called her, she's mad and wants to fuck you. Friends. Alright. Step two, you gotta notice stuff, but it has to happen naturally. So just be like my face. Now you're talking about your face, right? My face is my asset. I always bring it to my face. Step three, you gotta make it funny, okay? Now there's two ways in the world to make something funny. I'll teach you all of them. One, my face, that's what she said. My face, I f***ed your mother, and that's what she said. Now, if she doesn't think that's funny, it's probably because she's like into art and some bull thinks she's better than you, okay? So you gotta make a song about it. Be like, uh-uh-uh, my face, but it's gotta be the same song every time. She's gonna wanna hear it again. Uh-uh-uh, my face. Step four, it's gotta stay between you two. If other people know about it, it's just a hilarious joke, okay? You not Wayne Brady, keep it close, okay? Walk up to her, be like, don't tell anybody about this joke, bitch. Women respond to threats, she won't tell anybody. Now it's your inside joke. Oh yeah, yeah, it's worked for me. It's worked for me all the one time it works for me. But I only wanted it once. It gets scared. Welcome, ladies. Is anyone new to kickboxing? No one? Okay, then let's get started. We're gonna go into a light boxer shuffle. This is just to warm up our muscles a little bit. Now, ladies, the key to kickboxing is to imagine your assailant in front of you, whether it be a mugger, a rapist, or maybe it's your ex-husband. I can't be sure. Now, we're gonna start off with some short jabs. Jab right, jab left. Jab right, jab left. Just real quick, and you're gonna wanna aim for the throat. That way, when he starts talking, you can shut him up real fast. Good job, ladies. Great form. Now we're going to go into some hooks, OK? Hook right, hook left. Hooks are really good for hitting the temporal lobe, because that's where all his lies originate. Lies like, oh, my cell phone doesn't get any reception in my office now that I've suddenly hired an adorable new secretary. We're going to move down to the legs, OK? 
Ladies, the kneecap is the strongest part of your body, and it's great for crushing a man's skull on it, okay? Because you married him for 13 years, and now he's screwing his secretary. So you're gonna wanna grab it, then pull it down. Grab his skull, pull it right down. Now he's on the floor, but if he's twitching, that means there's still brain activity, and you're gonna wanna nip that in the bud. So take your heel and just jab it as hard as you can, real quick, right into his nose, sending it all the way into the back of his brain. Jab it, good job ladies. Okay ladies, now he's dead, so you're gonna wanna get rid of the body. You're gonna bend down, remember to bend at the knees, we don't want any back injuries. This is great for your core. Pick up the body, there you go. It's like a squat, there you go. Pick it up and run with it. And take it to the place where you've got your shovel, drop the body, pick up the shovel, and start to dig. Ladies, this is great for your obliques. And we're getting those beach bodies ready because you're single now. Excellent work. It doesn't have to be six feet, because remember, this isn't federally regulated. Pick up the body, put it in the grave. Pick up the body, put it in the grave. Excellent, excellent form, ladies. This is great for your core, once again. But uh-oh, the cops are onto you, and now they're chasing you. Start to run, excellent. Run as fast as you can. Your life literally depends on it. But the cops have caught up to you, and now they want to bring you in for an interrogation. So we need to get your heart rates down, okay? All right. What's that? No, I, I don't know where my husband is. No, he, he doesn't have any enemies that I know of. Are you insinuating that I might know what happened to my husband? No, it's just that we've been married for 13 wonderful years and have three beautiful children together. Yes, I will take a tissue. Oh, of course, I'll call you if I think of anything that might help the investigation. Just please bring my husband home to me. All right, they believed you, but barely, so it's time to cool down. So everyone, take a seat. Cross your arms in front of you. You're going to move to beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Other arm. Change your name to something exotic like Miranda. You dye your hair blonde. You've always wanted to be a blonde. They have more fun. <laughs> and you start teaching kickboxing at a local women's gym. But most importantly, ladies, that lying bastard will never hurt you again. Excellent work, ladies. Good job. Who likes a &W? Rip your floats around me. For everybody. You can get diet. It's fine. <laughs> Do you know that if you can tie a cherry stem in your mouth, that means you're a really good kisser? I can do it. Cherry. I've done it before. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay. I just had to get the taste of it in my mouth. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I did it. You want to make out? <laughs> yes, it's true. I used to be addicted to cocaine. But look at me now. I am happiness junkie. Author, energizer, yoga addict, addict. Who said to herself today, I'm going to wear angel wings and skateboard in public because anything is possible. Thank you, angels. Two and a half years ago, I was a Manhattanite socialite, sleeping with the best of Wall Street. But one day I said to myself, I don't have any hair because of the cocaine. So I took my addictive personality and I got addicted to something else. Now I snort, happiness. It's also called breathing. 
People always ask me, how do you stay so fit? I do yoga, girl. It's like yoga, but it's not. I copyrighted it. Yoga girl lifts my spirit and my butt. I used to be anorexic, but now I'm vegan. It's different. People always ask me, how do you date spiritually? Well, you man a sex. You see a guy that you want to have sex with and you think to yourself, I'm going to have sex with him. I'm going to have sex with him and then have sex with him. It's called manisexing and it's worked for me. I'm up to 400 post cocaine. I'll leave you with this. Angels, and he says angels, and he says angels, and he says angels. Be real. Just be your realest self and then be realer than that. I just gave away my whole book. for orchestrating that. Oh, sure, sure. Also, your email said you had some special news. What's um, up? Okay, yeah, I do. I have some news. I'm engaged! Oh, <laughs> oh, that is so cool! Oh, that is so, so exciting! Oh, my God. How? 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 Yes. Oh, okay, all right, it's really a fun much. story. Okay. So, oh. Daryl takes me to P.F. Chang's because he knows how much I love chain restaurants, yes. okay? So I get my usual pot stickers with a side of white rice and sweet and sour sauce. So I'm eating, we're having a great time, and like the whole time he's just staring at me. And then suddenly I start to feel cold and shaky, and then I start sweating, and then I throw up hot pink rice all over my plate. Right in the middle of it is my engagement ring. He hid it in the pot stickers. Turns out I'm allergic to gold plating, so I get a medical diagnosis and a proposal in the same night. How lucky am I? You are the luckiest. I know. Most people never find out they're allergic to gold plating. I know. Oh, that's amazing. I oh know. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I don't know how I could possibly follow up that story, but let me try. Um, I'm engaged. Here it comes. So Max says we're gonna go out camping for our anniversary. He says we're gonna go into the woods and we're gonna live off the land. So we get out there and he starts eating all of these native berries. All of a sudden I look at him, his eyes are glazed over, he's foaming at the mouth, and he's looking at me like he doesn't even know who I am. So suddenly he picks me up, throws me over his shoulder, strips me down naked, hoists me into a tree and leaves me there. Three weeks later, a Boy Scout troop comes by. They cut me down. Anyhow, I wake up in the hospital three months later from my coma, and Max is there with the ring saying, oh, that was kind of shitty. Will you marry me? <laughs> you have to ask now. <laughs> you have to. But now we've just been going on and on. I know. And you've been so quiet, Sue Ellen. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't really have much to do. I'm in mean, <laughs> He dips his hand in on the sidewalk in front of the Jersey Boys and God, he writes, will you re-dip, marry me. I, of course, screech out a yes. He reaches back in, pulls out this little beauty from his rib cage. Turns out he had made him swallow it two weeks prior. So when he gets out of prison, we're getting married. <laughs> Um, have you guys heard about Melissa? She got engaged on Valentine's Day. Ugh, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. Her relationship is so unhealthy. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's my appetite. So I asked them, where's your father? They said they don't know. But they had ice cream cones, so I knew he had given them money to lie to me. 
but ain't no amount of money worth getting the wooden spoons, he asked. So I opened up the drawer, took out the spoon, and I said, is he with Bobby? No. Tommy? No. Jimmy? No. Israel? No. Sully? And all of a sudden they can't look at me. I knew where he was. So I marched on down to the Chelsea Center hockey rink, and there, as sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, there's Joey and Sully, and Joey is throwing up the dinner that I made him. So what did I do? I'll tell you what I did. I reached into his back pocket and pulled out the cigarettes that I asked him to get me four hours earlier. I lit one, I held it this close to his eye, and I said, if you ever make my kids lie to me, if you ever make them lie to me, the woman that carried them around in her own body for nine months while you got shit canned with your little union buddies, you ever make them lie to me, the alpha and omega of their very existence, the only reason they know how to read or wipe their own ass or where they live. Joey, so help me God, as sure as the oceans are full of salt, I will put this out in your urethra. The only reason you have anything to do with them being here is because you couldn't go more than 30 seconds without busting a nut inside of me. So if you want them on your team, you want them to be your little lookouts, I will tie them around your stomach in the middle of July while you go on a 12-hour nursing shift. Because then, and only then, do you get them on your team. Because I will tell you one thing, Joey, as sure as the rain falls from the sky, I did not drop out of eighth grade to raise my brothers, and I did not drop out of high school to marry you, and I did not drop out of nursing school to raise them, to have you turn them against me. You understand? Now wipe your mouth and get in the car. We gotta make sure they haven't lit the house on fire. <laughs>